going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has yes, he talked has. about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. Oof. And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. Whoa. Hey. She, she kind of grinded her teeth like she was just going, you know, take the earrings and just start whooping that fool. Like this right here is the Vice President Harris that I want to see. Like, hey, say say one more crazy thing, I'm a whoop on you. You know what I'm saying? Disrespect me one more again like that in my face and we're going to have a problem. So honestly, what did you think would happen? I mean, fair, fair question. She's doing her, you know, multimedia platform, just kind of just going through every single podcast that she could think of because, you know, she jumped into the game late. So it's understandable why she's doing that. But when I heard she was going on Fox News, at first I thought it was another conspiracy because it's like, why would you purposely go to Fox News knowing that they're going to be disingenuous nothing but a bunch of gotcha questions and just a lot of emotional manipulation tactics to kind of put anyone really into a weird type of weird questioning to where any answer you kind of give is subpar at best you know so she did it i watched it and it was bad <laughs> if 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 i can be honest um i'm not i'm not a a super uh kamala uh type of supporter but i do know that i am voting for uh uh kamala to win if that makes sense so i have no emotional ties to this so i could be as honest as i can so it was bad but it was the best someone in that position can do. Like, you're not going to go out there just just a, a knockout victory. Like, let's be honest. So, um, it was, you know, <laughs> it was subpar at best. And, and we're going to go watch it. I don't want to kind of give you my, my two cents into it uh, until after we kind of watch um, some, some areas. So, let's go ahead and uh switch this over and um just just right out the gate it was just awkwardness like i thought i missed a portion of it but i realized like no this is the start of the debate uh not debate but just the questioning was just weird and it's like you know this is fox news so let's go ahead and watch and uh <laughs> see see how this went down. Madam Vice President, thank you for the time. Thank you. It's good to be with you, Brett. You know, voters tell pollsters all over the country and here in Pennsylvania that immigration is one of the key issues that they're looking at this election, and specifically the influx of illegal immigrants from more than 150 countries. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a is, number. Do you but, think it's but, 1 million, 3 million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay. <laughs> it's like even starting off is like awkward. Like what kind of question is that? Because if you say a million... People are going to be like, oh, my God, you let in the money. If you say three million, if you say 10 million, any number that follows million is going to sound like it's a lot. And if you look at the data in context, millions cross over legally and illegally through anyone's uh, administration. So, like, it's just a weird question. Like, you can Google that that number. Like, why why are we starting off? the conversation with a weird gotcha question. Because if she says 1 million, people are going to go nuts. If she says 3 million, people are going to go nuts. Like, okay, I guess. Let's continue. If the point is that we have a broken immigration system 
that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of apprehensions... I'm not apprehensions, finished. I'm not finished. We have a, we have it's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Most significantly, the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. So instead, included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? Now, once again, just weird questioning in, in the way that... He, Anyone could phrase a question. If Trump went on CNN, they will phrase their questions to pin tr uh, Trump in the corner. So, like, let's be honest and, and understand the tactics here. Like, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. You understand phrasing of a question. And depending on how you phrase it, it's going to pin someone in the corner. Um, when it comes to Trump's, uh, 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 his... His uh, executive orders, I don't know why I keep forgetting that word, um, his executive orders, when you do things like that, the next president that comes in can reverse them with ease. And that's why it's more important to get things passed through the proper channels through Congress so it can't easily be rolled back. You know what I'm saying? Because when you can get things passed through Congress, it's a little bit more concrete. So it's like... Once again, it's like, and she and she's gonna get to it. Why is Trump trying to get things done through executive orders? And if it was such a big issue and he had his time as president, how come he couldn't get an actual bill passed for the immigration issue? But that that's just me nitpicking. Is like, okay, but let's let's hear how she answers it. At the beginning of our administration, within practically hours of taking the oath, the first bill that we offered Congress, before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before, any, before the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It and, was essentially and, so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... Finish, yes, ma'am. May, may I finish responding, please? But, here, but, this, but you have to let me finish, You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding to the point you're raising, okay. and I'd like to finish. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question, it is a priority for us as a nation and for the American people. And our focus has been on fixing a problem. And from day one then, we have done a number of things, including to address our asylum system and pour, put more resources, getting more judges, what we needed to do to tighten up penalties and increase penalties for illegal crossings, what we needed to do to deal with ports, points of entry between border, entry points, that's the work we did, and we worked on supporting what was a bipartisan effort, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, to actually strengthen the border. That border bill would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border, which is why I believe the Border Patrol agents supported the bill. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States, which is a scourge affecting people of every background, every geographic location in our country, killing people. It would have allowed us to put more resources into prosecuting transnational <laughs> criminal organizations, which I have done. You, you can easily tell he's not listening. He's, he already has his next talking points locked and loaded. Like he's just like waiting for her to like take a breath, like so he can just jump right in and ask a question. Like 
you know, but, you know. Yes, ma'am. Has the attorney general, former attorney general of a border state. Madam Vice President, a couple of things. Prosecuted trafficking of drugs, <laughs> six, guns, and human beings. And six Donald Democrats, Trump, but let me just finish. Six and Democrats Donald voted Trump against that bill. learned about that bill and told them to kill it because he preferred to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And in this election, this is rightly a discussion that the American people want to have. And what they want are solutions, and they want a president of the United States who's not playing political games with the issue, I hear you. but actually is focused on fixing Six it. Six Democrats voted against So I, I honestly wish she would have just started off with that. Like, hey, as soon as we, before I even sat down in my seat in the White House, we were already trying to propose a bill to strengthen uh, the, the border with more border patrols, more judges, more yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Like, she should have started off with that. But, of course, you know, they got their talking points. She has her talking points, and they need to hit every single talking point for whatever reason. And we know what she, what she was going to say. So, it was like, I wish he would engage with her answer. Oh, you know, uh, Donald Trump didn't do this and this and this, like engage with that. But like, once again, it feels, feels like it could have been more substantive conversation instead of just two people in talking points at this point. So I guess against you know. that bill, it would have allowed 1.8 million illegal immigrants into the country a year. A lot, a lot of conservatives had a problem with it. These are the six Democrats, but more importantly, back to the original premise, Jocelyn Nungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration, well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lakin Riley Sunday, campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lakin Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying to you, uh, no, do you no, no, owe no, those I families think really, I think an apology? Let me see. Once again, what what kind of question is that? As if as soon as she uh, uh, cut off uh, Trump's uh, whack executive orders, all of a sudden, she just invited herself illegal immigrants into the country and said, like, do whatever you want in the country. No, be honest with yourself. And second off, if we want to play that game, which I, I never want to try to politicize people's deaths, which is like immoral, in, in my opinion, you can. A list a number of people who were killed under Trump's administration, under Obama's administration, under uh, Bush's administration. Like you can do that all the way down. So what's the point? What's the point of the question? I don't know. But you're it's a talking point from Fox News and Kamala Harris is going to give a talking point uh, uh, to, to not say I'm sorry, because then you're taking ownership of that. Which you can't because you can't physically stop people from illegally crossing. That's that's literally the definition of illegally crossing. Like you're doing it without permission, and no, and no, uh, uh, uh conversation has uh, Harris or any Democrat said we just want immigrants to just flood our nation, just come in for free and and have no restrictions whatsoever. No one has said that. So it's like, once again, what is the point of the question? And we already know Kamala Harris is not going to answer the question. So once again, we're five, almost six minutes in, and it's just nonsense. But let's just continue say first of all those are tragic cases there's no question about that there is no question about that and i can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred so that is true it is also true that if a board of security had actually been passed nine months ago it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more 
support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together Madam Vice President. to ensure that no future harm would occur and this election and once again great point you know like hey if we would have implemented this bill you know for this and this and this and abc then yeah but you can't guarantee nothing is going to happen once again that is not a answerable question but you know that's that's just what in 20 people days want to talk about i guess we'll determine whether we have a president of the united states who actually cares more about fixing a problem even if it is not to their political advantage in an election because there was a solution brett madam vice president it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration i will let one of the mothers talk about it take a listen <laughs> Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early... <sighs> I'm 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 trying not to sound rude or as if I don't care, but once again, it is extremely disingenuous to use people's pain for your political talking points. And and I don't I I I guess I, I'm just living in another world when people keep saying Democrats are for open borders when you say open borders at least to me and, and let me know in the comments down below if it means something different open borders to me means there is no border patrols there's no uh, uh um you know ports of entry there's nothing no wall or whatever is left of that wall uh nothing it's just come and go as you want no Democrat is no no uh, 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 Congress member. OK, let's it might be some weirdo uh, voters out there, but no one who is a serious person is saying we want open borders. So once again, even for that mother to even repeat that is disingenuous. And I don't understand why people feed into that. It is pointless, but <laughs> days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying? I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I'm so sorry for her loss, sincerely. But let's talk about what is happening right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions. Let's and that's the best you can answer that question is, hey, I'm sorry for her loss. But we need solutions and we didn't get that solution because of Donald Trump and his goons that would, you know, jump how high ever Trump says he wants them to jump. You know what I'm saying? So once again, this whole emotional manipulation type of tactics is played out to me like it's, it's damn near evil. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know, people are dying. Let's use that and, and, and try to manipulate people that way. Like, once again, that's that's what Republicans feel comfortable doing, because if if you think that's OK, you have no soul. And if you do have a soul, it's black and it's dark and it's evil. That simple. You are a, you are an evil person if you think it's OK to use people's pain for your political progression pretty evil to me but let's go to the next one 10 minutes in 36 it's hard to see these numbers all right time when voters especially here in pennsylvania are inundated with commercials and ads they just want it to stop because it's every commercial but <laughs> many of them add noise but a few of them seem to break through this particular one from the trump campaign has gotten a lot of attention Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. 
So, are you... <laughs> Once again, I had to find that uh, conversation, which for for the life of me, I, I could have been playing League of Legends instead of trying to find this stupid conversation. Listen to the whole entire conversation as a whole in context. Once again, it's easy to manipulate things to make it sound like it's something more than what it is. But context, which a lot of Trump supporters don't understand what that means. They probably don't even own a dictionary or don't know how to use Google. Look that up and then listen to the entire conversation and then have your opinion. But yeah, you're still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender. I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, you're probably familiar with now it's a public report that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to on a medical necess necessity basis to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition. Well, surgery. You know, Ugh, once again, the conversation was brought up to her. She didn't say, hey, this is something that I'm championing. This is something that I want, you know, uh, uh, my administration to run on. No, that's not even like something to really campaign on, you know. So once again, but just like she said, this is something that has been in the books for whatever reason. I tried to look up how many illegal immigrants had uh, transition surgeries and couldn't find any because honestly, I don't think people are really keeping track of that. And, and maybe I just couldn't find it. Let me know if you you can find something, you know, let me know if it's been millions upon millions. Then we can have a conversation about that. But. From from what I gathered was it has to be some sort of uh, uh, emergency type of surgery, which once again, I don't get understand why that would happen. And honestly, I don't care. OK, like that's so out of my realm of caring about things. I don't even want to waste time trying to dig deep into that. That's not my main issue. Let's talk about some substantive uh, substantive things instead of illegal immigrants transi transitioning, which is like the two things that every Trump supporter fear, immig uh, uh, immigrants and trans people. Put those together, that's like kryptonite to a lot of Trump supporters for whatever reason, but you know. You know what, you gotta take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no surgeries happened in this pregnancy. It's, it's in so black and white. Would you still advocate for using taxpayer he dollars said, no, for I don't, gender reassignment? I don't know about I will follow the law, just as I, I, I think Donald Trump would say he did. You would have a say as president. I, like I said, I think it's real. he spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. That's a good Whereas, point. Whereas, at $20 million on that ad, on an issue that, as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, it's really quite remote. And again, his policy was no different. Look at where we are, though. They on say plans Once again, she brings up a good point. Not not the, the best answer that I would have given or advised but if if trump knew about this law how come he just didn't get rid of it he got rid of a lot of other uh obama uh implemented uh executive orders if he knew about this why didn't he just get rid of it i don't know frankly i don't think he really even knew about it you know and then two if you're spending 20 million dollars on an ad to fear monger people why? Why not use that money to uh, uh, um, to promote your policy plans or, or what you tend to offer the American people? I mean, call, call me crazy, but that sounds to me like you're just trying to fear monger your voters to go vote. 
I don't know. I could be crazy, but I would I would want to hear a plan instead of a, a small percentage of whatever is happening with these illegal immigrants. I would rather hear about policy plan. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just a nerd, I guess. For the American people, I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. I'm offering a plan to deal with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. I am offering a plan that is about taking care of young parents and giving them the support they need. My plans for the economy will strengthen the economy, as have been reviewed by 16 Nobel laureates, uh, Goldman Sachs, Moody's, and recently the Wall Street Journal, which have all studied studied our plans and have indicated my plans for our economy would strengthen our economy, his would make them weaker, why do you would think ignite more people inflation say, and invite a recession by the middle of next year. Those you, are the facts. Why do you think more people say they trust him on the economy than they trust you? I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as President of the United States, it has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump, people are ready to. And I wish she would have at least explained that Trump doesn't even know what a tariff is. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to add like I'm the sharpest knife in the kitchen, but I at least know like the basics, the, the surface level understanding of tariffs i wish you would have brought that up and been like donald trump is misinforming his voters into thinking x y and z and trump doesn't even know the basic uh, uh necessities or how tariffs are implemented and the importance of it he doesn't even know that so you know would you rather tr uh trust trump who doesn't know the basics of economy or you want to trust the professionals who know what they're talking about. I don't know. But once again, a lot of Trump supporters don't understand what facts are. So I guess that's a losing battle. All right. <clears throat> 403. Let's see. Operations in our country and blow up our deficit. It's interesting you said turn the page, Madam Vice President. You were asked on two different shows last week what, if anything, you would do differently than President Biden. Here's yeah. what you said. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Under a Harris administration, what would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so yes. that would be one change yes. in terms of... But also, it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. So you're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. I invite ideas, whether it be from the Republicans who are supporting me, who are, were just on stage with me minutes ago, and the business sector, and others who can contribute to the decisions that I make about, for example, my plan for increasing the supply of housing in America and bringing down the cost of housing, D addressing the issue of small businesses, which is about working with <laughs> the private sector to bring more capital and access to capital to our small business leaders, including my plan mm -hmm. for a $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers we've, and for small businesses extending the tax deduction from five thousand dollars to fifty thousand we've heard a lot about those plans in, in recent days your campaign <laughs> slogan is a new way forward and it's time to turn. so once again i wish she would if she doesn't want to separate herself too far from joe biden at least tell the american people of the accomplishments or the the legislation that she helped pass and here's a list because because uh, a lot of people seem to not understand how google works this is public information you can find to see what 
uh, Biden's administration has passed in three and a half years. Uh, the American Rescue Plan, uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, Inflation Reduction Act, which inflation is going down to uh, what they want to aim towards, which is uh, t uh, 2%. So it's like, what, 2.4? So inflation is going down. So, you know, um, Chips and Science Act and Bipartisan Safer uh, Communities Act. So it's a lot of bills they passed. And some of them are pretty beneficial. So go ahead and flex on that. Say that out loud. Be proud of it. So people can know what Joe Biden has accomplished and tell the American people you want to use that as a stepping stone to build on top of that. Pretty simple. <laughs> but, you know, um, let me see. What's the next one here? 1843. So. This one, in my opinion, was uh, Kamala's uh, best performance right here. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for anyone. So are they misguided, the 50%? Listen, are they I'm, stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about <laughs> the American stupid. people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people, he's the one who talks about an enemy within. within. And but of course, they don't want to bring up Trump always disrespecting American citizens. But, you know, um, him trying to catch her by saying, you know, are they dumb? You know, are they, are they stupid? Like, what kind of is he supposed to be like a professional uh, a journalist or is he just someone you know some bum they just found on the streets and was like hey throw on this suit and uh read read these bullet points like i i don't understand the 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 avenue the path of these conversations here an enemy within talking about the american people suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. We asked that the, question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. <laughs> I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest. Oh no, it's All true. Right. We've no, but question. think of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> So he didn't even answer the question. He just said, oh, I'm not doing it, but they are like you. you but you said it and it's not your first time saying it. So go back and answer. Why did you say that then? Because he said that same thing in Colorado. He said he's going to reenact uh, 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 in an old um, um, act so he can uh deport legal immigrants you know like like why are we like so selective when it comes to understanding and, and hearing people he said these words and it's not his first time but let's just pretend like he answered the question let's pretend he just didn't really mean it you know he really meant this like I, I, i'm sorry and with all due respect that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people. That's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific... No, 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 that's not what you just showed in all no, fairness no, no. and I'm respect you, to you. I'm telling you that was the question that we asked him. Uh, you didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you yeah. and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He, yes, has, he has talked about locking people up because they disagree agree with him. This is a democracy. Oof. And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. Whoa. Hey, she she kind of grinded her teeth like she was just going, you know, take the earrings and just start whooping that fool like this right here is the vice president harris that i want to see like hey say say one more crazy thing i'm a whoop on you you know what I'm saying disrespect me one more again like that in my face and we're gonna have a problem like 
Of course, we know being on Fox News, they're going to be disingenuous. They're going to set up questions and videos to try to pin you in the corner. And that right there is probably the best she did with uh, uh, combating such a stupid question. And she did good, in my opinion. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said <laughs> about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. Uh, uh, let me ask you this, no, Madam no, Vice no, President. You call Donald Trump. The significance you, you, you of that. You call Donald Trump. Um, He's misguided. You say now he's he is unstable. unstable. He is unstable, Brett. Uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, <laughs> that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden, I have watched in, from the Oval Office to the Situation Room. And he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe Biden, no concerns raised? Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand. And but, Donald Trump, Donald Trump but is. But you talked about it. And Donald Trump After is. After George Clooney said and within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought this Brett, was not the Brett, same Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump, which is why the people... And, and once again, no one cares about Joe Biden. The, the Democratic voters didn't want him running. They took him out. Why are we even still talking about Joe Biden unless it's policies that he put forward we already know joe biden old as hell and when you get old as hell you start you're you're not as sharp as when you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s on it's 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 not hard to understand and i wish you would have answered because once again it's his talking points versus her talking points so it's just going to be it's just going to be a a, a awkward conversation you know, he's not asking a genuine question and she's not giving a genuine answer. She could have just easily said, hey, I'm not a doctor. I'm not his doctor. We had conversations about policies and what to do for the American people. And he was able to have those conversations and have a sharp, clear answer. And we were able to accomplish a lot of positive things for the American people. I'm not his doctor. George Clooney is not a doctor. Um, that's his opinion though. Um, and Joe Biden, he spoke to his doctors in X, Y, and Z, and that's why I'm in the race. Real simple. She's not a doctor. Why are we asking her, you know, uh, uh, his his mental health and, and all, like, no, leave it alone. So, but once again, that's just a bunch of nonsense, but, like I said before, let me pull up my notes here. Like I said before, this was going to be something that was going to be a a lose lose for uh, Vice President Harris. She wasn't going to gain uh, like a, a a crazy amount of support from you know, uh, Trump supporters or Republicans. She wasn't going to lose Democratic voters. Like it was just to show that she can have these conversations even with Fox News. She's not running from uh, uh, any conversation unlike Trump. Trump canceled a C uh, or he hasn't been on CNN. He canceled what a 60 minutes interview and, and canceled a, a couple of other ones where it's, it's going to be tough questions. But he wants to be around people who's just going to just stroke his ego, his not eagle, his ego. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like I knew that this was just going to be talking point versus talking point. Uh, it's going to be no substantive in, engaging questions and nothing but social media clips to be farmed for views. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, 
I didn't really learn anything. I didn't really, you know, no eye opening type of, you know, uh, uh, situations happen. And I'm pretty sure a lot of Trump supporters are not going to see anything positive from this interview, you know, so it was just all for show, all for spectacle. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments down below. And like always, let's have that conversation.